Hello everybody and welcome back to the Vernian Treasury Treasure Vault. As always, I'm Lee and this is Little Bit. Hey pasa, mi amigos. Today I wanted to profile one of my favorite pottery companies, the Jersey City Pottery Company, which began as one of the premier pottery companies before the Civil War and was one of the earliest art pottery companies in New Jersey. Oh, I know all kinds of things about New Jersey. Really? Please do tell. Yeah, it's home to something called a Snooky. And it's an important place for the spring migration period. It's where all the college kids fly to. Yeah, you really need to stop getting your facts from MTV. So, as I said, today we are profiling the Jersey City Pottery Company. What well, is a Snooky, anyways? It sounds tasty, like a cross between a Snickers and a cookie. In order to talk about the Jersey City Pottery Company, we have to rewind back to its roots in 1824, uh, when George and Phineas C. Dummer, yes, the Dummer and Dummer brothers, I'll let that sink in for a second, can't make this up, well I can, but I'm not. The Dummer and Dummer brothers in 1824 started the Jersey Glassworks Company, and a year later they founded the Jersey Porcelain Earthware Company, which was adjacent right next door to the Jersey Glassworks. They were the first company in the United States to commercially uh, produce porcelain and um, they hired uh, workers from England, Ireland, France, um, all over Europe, but mostly uh, England and Ireland France through William W. Shirley and uh, they manufactured sapphire, shire, light earthenware and porcelain. In 1826, Dummer Porcelain won the silver medal at an exhibition uh, of the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia for the best china from American materials. I've also seen um, one instance where it was recorded that they won the gold medal and they were the only entrant uh, to the <clears throat> um, uh, exhibition that year, but I believe that's being confused with something that happened a couple years later with a different company of a similar name. Anyways, just wanted to tell that. Uh, it was however soon found that the American raw materials uh, being used to produce the pottery, in particular the soil coming from uh, Paulus Hook, was uh, immensely inferior and did not measure up to the standards of craftsmanship of the imported English ceramic of the time. Due to this, <clears throat> only um, a few short years later, three short years later in 1828, um, the Dummer brothers sold to David Henderson and his brother Joseph um, the uh, Jersey Porcelain Earthworm Company. Um, Dave and his brother Joseph renamed the company to D&J Henderson Pottery Company, or sometimes referred to as D&J Flint Stoneware Company. Uh, the names are both used interchangeably. Um, Henderson was born in Scotland in 1793, <clears throat> and he gained a reputation in the United States for in introducing molded pottery um, to the U.S. from England. They're actually the first company <coughs> to commercially use molded pottery anywhere in the United States. So the molded pieces of pottery we love so much, it's thanks to these guys, the, the forerunners of the Jersey City Pottery Company. Uh, the company produced refined white earthenware. Um, they also made uh, brown glazed stoneware, yellow earthenware um, and from the, the same molding process. This pro the process reduced the cost of pottery to consumers, but it also replaced exclusively using skilled potters. They did still use skilled potters um, for, you know, when they were doing extra flourishments to a piece or for specially ordered pieces or for um, pieces that were, you know, for um, special circumstances or events. Uh, five years later, um, D and J Henderson <coughs> was incorporated and they changed the name to the American Pottery Manufacturing Company in 1833. Even though that they were doing mass producing with molding, the quality was still not being sacrificed and was, uh, they were one of the premier companies in the United States prior to the Civil War. Um, they were up there at the very top. <clears throat> in fact, so much so that in 1840, William Henry Harrison commissioned them to create a hexagonal picture specifically for uh, his campaign. Um, I was not able to get permission from the museum, from the Buffalo History Museum in time to put uh, the picture into this video, so I'm going to put a link to it in the description. I highly recommend checking it out. It's a cool piece of um, American pottery and American political history, both. <laughs> 
the new method of molding borrowed from England and uh, made possible the casting of stoneware, uh, Rockingham, yellowware pieces, um, you know, and so it, they did a mold instead of having to, to make each piece by a potter, uh, one at a time by a potter's wheel. Um, it not only speeded up uh, production process, but it also made possible the relief decoration that was so popular in the Victorian era, uh, which you can see in some of the examples that I have been showing, um, in particular the, uh, that great teapot, um, as well as that awesome picture with the female form handle, both uh, exquisite pieces done by um, the, uh, the DNJ Henderson uh, Flint Stoneware Company, and both of those pieces are in the Met and the American Wing. I had the opportunity to see them a couple years ago <coughs> and pictures don't do them justice, I'll tell you that. Uh, Henderson was also responsible for creating a uh, transfer print to earthenware products here in the United States. Uh, before that transfer print to earthenware was coming out of Europe, he was the first one to do that also um, as a uh, commercially produ uh, produced item. Um, and that was actually what was used in the William Henry Harrison 1840, cam 1840 campaign piece. Um, he also did another piece of, for Major General Marquis de Lafayette's landing and Revolutionary War at Castle Garden in Battery Park. Um, that was also a hexagonal picture with transfer, earth <coughs> transfer wear on top of earthenware. Um, that was done in 1843. The American uh, Pottery Company, which it became known five years later um, in 1833 after he incorporated the D&J Henderson Company, became known for training uh, workers that they were drawn from all across the nation and started careers of many English-born or English-trained um, ceramic uh, ceramic potters. Uh, among them was the modeler Daniel Greatbach. Um, as uh, well as the glassblower uh, William Ridgway, who at the time was making fireproof, fireproof baking dishes, bowls, and pitchers at the still attached glassworks. Uh, among others that, whose careers were launched there was James Bennett, James Carr, and William Bloor, which is a great piece here <coughs> by William Bloor uh, that was made when he was still with the Jersey City Pottery Company. Uh, beautiful, a beautiful year that is, um, was initial and dated by him. As Henderson's master mold designer, Daniel Greatbach designed many fine collectible pieces of molded pottery for the American Pottery Company between 1838 and 1848. His notable designs were teapots, creamers, and sugars, sugar bowls in white glazed stoneware, and the first American Rockingham hound-handled pitcher executed about 1840. Uh, the picture here is um, basically the same exact form, just in a yellowware uh, example. And this piece can be seen in the Met um, in the American Wing. Um, the quality and design of the pottery produced at the American uh, Pottery uh, Company placed Henderson at the, at the very, very top um, among pottery companies at this time. Um, his work, uh, Henderson's work, actually received the silver medal at exhibition uh, by the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia in 1830, um, and also at the American Institute in New York the same exact year. Unfortunately, the future of the Henderson Pottery Company, uh, the or the uh, now being called the um, American Manufacturing Pottery Company, was brought into question upon his accidental shooting death in the Adirondack Mountains in 1845. Can't talk all of a sudden. By the 1850s, the company's um, future was in jeopardy and in question. Um, <clears throat> so in walked the English potters John Rouse and Nathaniel Turner. They bought the company in the late 1850s and they, at that point in time, changed name to the Jersey City Pottery Company. That company was uh, doing immensely well uh, right through the Civil War, but as the 1860s wore on <coughs> and the war wound down, other companies started popping up there uh, and, and also the style uh, of work that was uh, being produced um, that was popular was changing and so many other companies that were doing molded pieces were coming out that the uh, the business started to fade unfortunately um, most of the pieces you see <coughs> from the Jersey City Pottery Company out there um, were produced after the Civil War 
Um, but about 1888, 1889, somewhere right around there, uh, 1890 is the latest date I've seen. The company was um, folded, and then the building was sold in 1899, 1892. Actually, the property, the whole property was sold in 1892, and the building was raised. It was completely torn to the ground. Um, the only um, picture that I can find of the building uh, that <clears throat> any, any of the museums I talk to have is this lithograph here. Um, I have yet to be able to find anyone that has a photograph of the building itself, which is unfortunate. We do know that <laughs> um, where the building was located, um, so that's good. It was at the uh, corners of Warren and Essex Street um, and the uh, Paul's Hook uh, region there in Jersey City. The Dummer Brothers and David Henderson actually were also the first early examples of local corporate philanthropy throughout the United States. Um, they knew that most of the workers were Roman Catholics and those workers were having to travel to New York City <laughs> for um, religious services. So they decided to build the first Catholic congregation um, church in Jersey City just for them. If you're in Jersey City and you're driving down Luis Munoz Marin Boulevard, that uh, before 1982 was actually called Henderson Street and that was named after David Henderson. Um, so they, uh, the company, the American Pottery Company, Jersey City Pottery Company and the people <coughs> surrounding those companies uh, were very well respected and very uh, much revered for the history of Jersey City. Um, most of the pieces you see <coughs> of uh, Jersey City Pottery are floral pieces. Um, they do these great bright bright, bright colors, um, or vivid, vivid, um, rich colors, dark colors. They do a lot of uh, seasonal pieces, as can be seen here. And the head of the, the, the artistic, uh, head artistic director gave the artist there uh, a lot of artistic freedom. Basically, they would say, hey, we need a floral piece, do what you want. Or, um, you know, we need a summer piece and do what you want to do. Um, they were they were real popular with uh, with pillow vases. Uh, you see a lot of pillow vases coming out from them. They also did a lot of pictures, yours, uh, traditional vases. Um, <laughs> but the majority of things you're going to find from them are floral, as can be seen in the examples uh, photographs here. I want to thank P uh, Pat's Pots and uh, the eBay seller Pork Lion. <clears throat> they um, they gave me a lot of the photographs you're seeing here for the uh, Jersey City Pottery Company. Um, in fact, uh, if you want to purchase any pieces of Jersey City Pottery, Pat's Pots has uh, a wonderful vase, uh, which is one of the pieces that you've seen here, available through Pots and ACNJ, the eBay seller. Um, and Pork Lion has two pitchers and a, uh, a great fall pot also available. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but they were kind enough to let me use their photographs, so I definitely want to re return the kindness and put a link to um, their sales, their listings on eBay in the description. So if you're interested, check them out. They're reputable sales, sellers. Um, I just bought a, uh, a great landscape piece from Pat's Pot uh, back in Christmas time, and they're definitely competitively priced. Um, <laughs> before I show the landscape pieces, which is what I am, uh, am yeah, most inclined to purchasing from them and the pieces that I think are um, the most artistic and the most eye-catching of the Jersey City Pottery pieces um, and, and one of the rare type pieces you can find of Jersey City Pottery. Um, if you're interested in watching videos like this on different types of antiques or pottery, um, history, please subscribe. Um, <clears throat> or if you just like watching a little bit, give me a hard time, or sometimes she takes the channels over, channel over, come check out that as well. Uh, maybe you'll just find some antiques you, you enjoy during the process. Um, these two pieces I had <laughs> the great privilege of uh, picking up about a year ago. Um, I fell in love with these after I went to the Met, um, the Jersey City Pottery after I went to the Met a couple years ago. Um, you can see the Pilgrim vase here is the piece that um, is at the Met. It's the only other double-sided pieces I've seen besides these two here. This shows the Jersey uh, City Harbor from a uh, boat's perspective, and then Jersey City Shore um, with people enjoying the beach and a couple of sailboats. 
And then also this great summer or um, winter uh, pillow vase piece that I just picked from Pat's Pot. Um, these three plus three other uh, landscape pieces, the only ones I've ever seen, one being included there in the Met. Um, the other uh, rare type of you should keep uh, your aisles, aisle for is their portrait bases, which you can see here. Um, great company, uh, great piece of party to, to collect. And just remember, if you have any American porcelain pieces, you can thank the Dummer Brothers for it. Dumber and Dumber to the rescue to make porcelain for the American people, right? So thank you for watching. You still and didn't answer my question. Tell me what a Snooky is and where can I get one? No and hell no. So, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Don't forget to click the like button and hit that bell for notifications. You'll know when we upload a new video, which we try to do about twice a week. Again, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.